From a very young age, I wanted to be a superhero. I wanted to be able to fly, climb buildings. I wanted to have super strength. So I read some research, and actually, I realized that I've never been born in Krypton. I've never been bitten by a mutant spider. And actually, I've never been exposed to gamma radiation. So, I needed to find a new way as a me mortal that I was going to become a superhero. And in the process, I discovered Batman. And I loved him ever since. Because he's only human, just like the rest of us. But how, how did he do that? How did he become a superhero with no superpowers? Well, actually, Batman uses his brain to come up with cool devices for superpowers. Whenever he finds a problem that can't be solved by his human abilities, he'll go out and try to find a solution to it using the available technology of his time. From tools that were not much more sophisticated than, you know, standard lock picks and pass keys during the 40s, moving into the development of gadgets that were small enough to fit in his utility belt during the 50s to innovations that literally rocketed into the realm of science fiction during the 60s. You know, so he would fly in spaceships, and he would have ray guns and stuff like that. Which was also reflective of the times, right? Remember the 60s? The age of space exploration. The decade, we decided to put a man in a giant tin can and send him from Earth all the way to the moon. But there was a problem the technology necessary to coordinate all this incredibly complicated rocket system didn't exist at that time. But NASA engineers, who were also pretty cool at building cool devices, put together one of the most advanced computers of its day, the Apollo Guidance Computer. They did this with this. <laughs> But even more amazing than that is that your cell phones in your pocket right now, your iPads in your classrooms, have the computer power to launch more than a million Apollo 11 simultaneously. <laughs> and what are we using it to do? <laughs> there is a disconnect between the technology that you have available to you, the problems we are facing in society, and whether you know how to use this technology to its full potential. But what can you do about it? Well, you can learn how to code. And I know what you're thinking right now. Hey, here we come again with the whole, everyone needs to learn programming, right? Why do I even need to listen to the Spaniard telling me what to do? <laughs> Which is actually a very good question. But probably the same question they were asking back in the 1400s about reading and writing. <laughs> and now that you know how to read and write, don't you think that it's really convenient that you have this skill, this mental process, that you can apply, and you can apply it to problems and then find solutions to these problems? This is a Hummingbird microcontroller, a computer that you can fit in your pocket. You can buy it for about 50 US dollars, and it comes with a bunch of sensors and motors. 50 US dollars for Batman's utility belt. <laughs> what? Imagine the things students could do with this if we taught them what to do with this. They could do things like you know, setting up a distance sensor in your room that greets you every time you come in, or set up a methane sensor that actually identifies who on earth is constantly farting in class. <laughs> really cool stuff to do. But what is next? Well, maybe they could use their coding knowledge to try to solve societal problems we are facing that don't make sense in a world with computers. Because, believe it or not, real-life superheroes do actually exist. Like this bunch of fourth graders at Saigon South International School, right? They were investigating where energy was being wasted in their lives. And they decided to build prototypes 
to help them deduce this energy waste using their knowledge of coding and sensor technology. Nine and 10 years old doing what? But like learning how to read and write, learning how to code takes time. And at the beginning, it's going to seem like a complete waste of time because you're going to be learning things like how to make the computer type words for you. Things that would be just much easier if you do them by hand. But if you stick at it and keep practicing, after a while, life will be just magical. You will have another lens to approach problems at the power to find solutions to these problems. You'll have the complete freedom to code up solutions that never existed before with nobody telling you that you can't. And hopefully, you'll get back into your classroom and bring back all these tools you've, you've learned from coding and apply them to whatever it is that you're teaching. If there is a change you want to see in society, you can do that with code. Then the next thing you know, you've transformed the world. Just like my favorite superhero. Thank you. <laughs>